uh, all right, thank you, okay, for coming, okay, and signing up, okay, for this uh, webinar. I just want to make a quick announcement here, okay. Uh, Family 365 webinars are specially created to replace the face-to-face -face seminars, which cannot be conducted in the current circumstances. So through the Family uh, 365 webinars, okay, participants will pick up knowledge and tips to navigate the challenges that they're facing in parenting, marriage, and also uh, family life. All right, uh, my name is uh, Kelvin. I'm actually from Cornerstone Community Services. Um, yeah, so uh, just a quick announcement, okay, that uh, due to the copyright issues, okay, the slides okay, will not be shared after the webinar. So, uh, but participants, okay, are free, okay, to take a screenshot, okay, if you wish, okay, in any point of time. All right, so I just want to let you know. Um, okay, again, okay, I actually joined um, um, Cornerstone in about 2010, okay, uh, before that, I was actually teaching in a, in a secondary school. I'm married, okay, uh, for about 15 and a half years, okay, and then uh, I have four beautiful children. All right, uh, before we start, okay, um, I, want, I just want to take a quick poll. Right now, we have... Uh, uh, 12 of you. <laughs> All right. Okay. If you can tell, okay, um, uh, ask, okay, a little bit about yourself, uh, then I will actually, um, uh, we'll, we'll share, okay, the demographics, okay. So basically just two questions. Um, so I will ask the, the FFL, okay, uh, staff to help, help us to launch, uh, the, actually the poll. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Out of the okay, the, the the people now, okay, we have about fourteen percent. Okay, it's not married. Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, it's good to to plan. Okay, ahead. Seventy one percent. Okay, uh, are married and attending this alone, and we have about fourteen percent. Okay, attending with your spouse. Okay, that's amazing. All right. Uh, can we just uh, move on to the next uh to the next uh question? So for those who are married, okay, maybe you can tell us okay, a little bit uh, about, about yourself. All right, uh, is, that, is that it? All right, uh, very interesting. Okay, uh, for, for now, okay, we actually we actually have about thirty percent, okay, of your who are newly, uh, newly wed. Okay, that's that that is amazing. All right, less than two years. Uh, fourteen percent, okay, two to five years. Uh, we don't have anyone here, okay, that's within five to ten. All right, and forty-three percent is within ten to twenty. Okay, that's the biggest group. Okay, in fact, uh, I I fall in that category too. Uh, that's great. And we have fourteen percent, okay, that is uh that has got that's married for twenty years, uh, and above. All right, okay, so uh, let us begin again okay, now. Okay. All right, objectives, okay, for today's uh, webinar, okay, what will I cover? All right, I will talk uh, about two important okay marriage concepts okay, that we must embrace or, or two beliefs okay that, that will these two beliefs actually form the foundation of a strong marriage. And then okay, I will share three actionable takeaways okay, or three keys that will help you strengthen okay your marriage. All right, so let's begin. Oh yeah, the two important concepts and then the three uh, takeaways. So um statement number one, all right, is this okay, marriage is designed to bless you all right marriage is designed to bless you uh, uh, today okay in this day and age there are many okay a negative publicity okay about marriage or uh, in fact there is like an old chinese proverbs okay they actually say 
uh, uh, Hun Ying Si Ai Ching, the Fen Mu, okay, or, or actually says uh, marriage is like the graveyard okay, of a romantic relationship. I, I think, okay, this is a terrible okay, way to define marriage. Uh, really, okay, marriage is never meant to make your life miserable, all right? Because it really, on any given day, you can list all the problems that you have. But if you take the time to actually list down all the blessings uh, in your life, you will realize that uh, the number of things that you can uh, give thanks for actually far surpass the number of things that you want to complain about. All right. The problem, okay, is we tend to magnify okay, our challenges, okay, a lot more and forget the benefits that we are that we have, okay, as a married couple. I give an example, okay, uh, just like eating in a in a in a restaurant, okay. If you have, if you have a restaurant that you frequent, okay, uh, then I want to tell, okay, like like let's say, okay, you've been there many times, and every single time the restaurant, okay, has served you faithfully, okay, with good food, all right, and also with good services. But if one day, okay, in your meal, okay, you actually uh, uh, saw a cockroach in your food, all right, or, or like, uh, um, or like a, a, a very bad experience okay, with a waiter or a waitress, okay, you, will, you will tend to remember that incident and very quickly, okay, forget all the years of that faithful service and the good food that they have served you. All right, this is just human nature, all right? But the, my, my encouragement okay, for you today is uh, we must not forget like the benefits that we have experienced as married couples. So this statement okay, is very important okay, in order for you to have a strong marriage. In fact, okay, there are many research and studies okay, and surveys that actually show that uh, there are many surprising benefits. Is it surprising because okay, it's a bit counterintuitive okay, for married, uh, um, uh, uh, these benefits okay, for married couples that we uh, don't usually hear about? All right, so next I'm going to share with you some of these findings. The first benefit, okay, is being married actually increases your chance of becoming financially better off. All right, and I'm not saying, okay, uh, I'm not talking about the making money out of your wedding, wedding banquet, okay. I think gone are the days, okay, now it's okay, so expensive. Yeah, but really it's over time, okay, uh, with um, tax benefits, okay, with, um, with, in, with investment, okay, uh, uh, benefits, okay, or, or even saving or even different opportunities, uh, married couples will tend to, 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 to see that their net worth actually, okay, uh, increases over time as compared if they, are, if they will remain single. There's actually a study, okay, um, by the American Journal of Sociology. They reviewed that married respondents experience per person net worth increases okay, of 77% over single respondents. All right, so basically, okay, your net worth actually uh, tends to be higher, okay, if, if uh, compared to if the person chooses to remain single. All right, so this is the first benefit. The next one, okay, being married increases your chance of having lower stress. Again, this one is like, oh, okay, uh, it's counterintuitive, but actually, okay, there's a study in the University of Chicago. Uh, they actually okay, realized, okay, and, and found out, okay, um, uh, that, that married people, the case a brain actually produce uh, a, a, a reduce the production of stress hormones. Okay, in fact, okay, they expose the people to very stressful uh, situations, and then they test the saliva for cortisol, okay, which is a stress hormone, and they found that okay, uh, married couples actually produce less stress uh, hormones. Okay, so that's that's really interesting. Okay, next one. All right, being married, okay, increases your chance. Of having uh, uh increases your chance of living longer so congratulations okay if you uh, like to live longer uh, in fact being married actually extend okay or, or being married, okay, uh, give you a higher chance to live longer in fact in in 2019 uh, the guinness world record actually recognized the longevity okay of love okay of uh, john and charlotte henderson they're age 106 and 105 all right, okay, uh, they are they're recognized as the oldest okay, living married couple. All right, really interesting. And, uh, and the researchers okay, from Michigan State University and the University of Cincinnati found that living with a committed partner okay, actually lower the mortality rate for men by 80% and for women okay, by 59%. So there you go. All right. Okay, there are many okay um, uh, benefits and findings okay from 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 research. Okay, uh, these are some of the others okay, that that will share with you. Yeah, married couples actually are less likely to be depressed. People with a spouse are less likely to engage in risky behavior. Married people have uh, better outcomes okay after major surgery. Okay, they are more likely to survive cancer as compared to singles. And married people okay uh, get better sleep. Okay, I think I agree with that. Okay, after looking after kids and so many things, usually when we get to sleep, okay, we actually usually sleep really well. All right. And the question okay is, do married people actually cope better okay with a circuit breaker? 
or, or like the, the COVID-19 situation, right? Actually, I, I really have a hunch that they do, all right? It's just that we don't have like, uh, uh, like uh, statistics or studies who actually prove that. So statement number one is very important, okay? Marriage is meant to bless you, all right? It is very important, okay? But we need the second statement as well. So this is the first thing that you must okay, embrace. So what's the second statement? The second statement, okay, is this, okay, marriage works, okay, when you work at it, all right? Marriage works, okay, when you work at it. All these benefits, okay, that's listed earlier, okay, it's not a given, okay, just because you are married, all right? Because marriage, uh, uh, marriage really requires, okay, a lot of work, all right? And uh, this statement, okay, is very important, okay, because there will be probably some of you all just now when I go through the slides, you are thinking, hey, that's, that's not my experience, okay, but then you got to ask yourself, okay, do you embrace this uh, second statement as well? Uh, there was once I spoke uh, 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 with a couple, all right, and then, okay, the wife is really upset with the, with the husband. And then, so when I spoke with the husband, okay, the husband actually said, okay, what do I do, okay? I never do anything, what? <laughs> All right, I thought that's really funny, okay? And I was thinking exactly, okay, you didn't do anything. That's why, okay, no wonder, okay, your wife is so upset. Because in marriage, okay, we need to do something, all right? We need to do our part. So marriage works, okay, when you work at it. All right, this is a picture of me, okay, and my beautiful wife, okay? It's taken in 20, uh, 2016, all right? Okay, if you are a tennis fanatic, okay, you can recognize this straight away. This is Center Court, okay, in Wimbledon, okay, uh, All England Lawn Club. And so this is where all the Wimbledon finals are played, all right? So I just want to give you an illustration. Just imagine with me, okay, all right? Last year in 2019, okay, the, the men's single okay, Wimbledon uh, finals, all right, uh, it is uh, is played okay, between Novak Djokovic and also Roger Federer. Uh, they actually played okay for almost five hours. All right, it's one of the, the longest in Wimbledon history okay for a men's single finals, and it's amazing okay match. Okay, can you imagine okay if if okay if I were there, and then okay uh, end of the end of the whole game okay I happen to meet okay Djokovic for example. All right, I will I will tell him hey Djokovic okay that is amazing match okay you are such an awesome player okay the strokes that you have um, you actually came back from behind and you won okay you are such an awesome player. All right, he will most likely okay say uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, but if I if I didn't stop there, okay, and I continue to to, to say hey Djokovic, okay, you are so lucky, you know, right? You managed to find the racket that fits you perfectly. Uh, if only I can find the racket that fits me perfectly, I think I can play as well as you. <laughs> All right, I hope you are cringing by now, okay, because that will be ridiculous, okay, and that will be insulting, okay, even to a to a professional player like that, because we all know, okay, the number of hours that they put in. All right, mental training, strength training, tennis training, they actually put in a lot of hard work. But why then, okay, sometimes when we see a couple uh, whose marriage is strong, all right, we tend to actually say, hey, you are so lucky, all right, you found, you found the perfect uh, soulmate. I want to tell, okay, uh, that is so not true, all right, because people with a strong marriage actually put in a lot of effort, okay, and invest a lot of time working on their marriage. And so, okay, I want to tell you, okay, today, uh, soulmates are not found. You cannot find your soulmate. In fact, soulmates are actually made in the trenches of life. When you go through different seasons, okay, the challenging times and the, and the happy times, you actually stick together, okay, and you work things out. And so really, okay, the key to, uh, the key to, a, to, to a success okay, in marriage is, is really servanthood. It's really about serving okay, one, one another and meeting okay, each other's needs. All right, uh, the best marriage is when two servants okay, are in love. And also, okay, of course, then the worst marriage okay, is when two very selfish people come together. All right, in fact, someone said, okay, if you are a very selfish person, okay, then don't get married, okay, because marriage is very brutal to selfish people. All right, because we all know, okay, when we get married, it's no longer about me already, okay, it's about us, it's about commitment, okay, it's about sacrifice. It's about okay, serving one another, meeting one another's need, all right? So the thing, okay, is really you have to do your part. So this two statement, okay, is, some, is something that lays the foundation, okay? If you don't believe marriage is good and it's meant to bless you, then it's very difficult for you to, to actually establish a strong marriage. And of course, okay, knowing that, okay, and seeing the potential benefits, you must then decide to do something about it and say, okay, hey, I'm going to invest time. I'm going to do something. That is why you are, you are here today, right? We want to learn something okay, that we can, we, can, we can actually apply and help us strengthen okay, our marriage. All right. Before I go into the three okay, keys, all right, I just want to dwell okay, on this like a little bit. Okay. If I ask you now, okay, how's your marriage in the midst of COVID-19 and what will your story be? 
what will your narrative okay be? Will it be a good narrative or will it be a, a negative one? All right. I want to tell okay, like the that this COVID-19 okay, has not ended yet. Okay, you are still writing your story. Okay, you can actually do something about it and change the story. Okay. Uh, if this if you're already experiencing okay amazing okay marriage, it can get better. Okay, and also okay, if let's say you are actually struggling, okay, you can do something about it, okay, to actually help improve your marriage. Uh, I understand, okay, that there are reports okay, that, that there's an increase in the number of people who are suffering, all right, uh, during this confinement, family violence, neglect and abuse, all right. I'm in no way trying to diminish, okay, the seriousness of such incidences, okay, because really my heart goes for these people. Believe me, okay, when I say that, because I'm on the ground guy, okay, I, I meet up with these families, okay, on a monthly basis, okay, I'm not sitting in my office, okay, thinking about policy, but really, okay, I'm there, okay, and my heart goes out to them, and I really pray, okay, that they will be able to get some form of help uh, and that will, that will give them relief okay, or as the restriction uh, eases off that really the situations okay, at home will improve okay, for them okay however okay we cannot deny the fact that there are uh, there are people okay who actually said that hey because of this COVID okay a uh, 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 situation or this COVID-19 pandemic uh, there's some blessings in disguise all right that yeah, that, that there's something okay that they feel uh, that they said okay that the marriage actually gets stronger or actually okay they feel that uh that the relationship the relationships actually improve okay in their in their marriage. So the thing I see what I want to say okay is is uh, this is not reserved for some lucky few. All right, if you will start okay to actually put uh, a thing differently and also put okay some of these practices into action okay you will see okay your marriage change okay as well. So. Now okay, we're talking about strengthening marriage. Okay, how okay, how are we going to strengthen okay marriage? Uh, generally, okay, it's really about decreasing negative feelings, okay, and increasing positive positive feelings. Okay, I will share three keys okay with you uh, this afternoon. Okay, so key number one, okay, is about fighting. All right, no, okay, I'm not asking you to fight. Uh, but okay, again, I say when I say fight, okay, I actually mean I actually don't mean like physical fight. So it is more of a, like a conflict, okay, or something, okay, uh, that you and your spouse is going through, okay. There's an argument, or there is, uh, there is like a certain conflict, okay, or disagreement. So the thing, okay, is the key number one, okay, is really to understand why we fight, and how we can reduce, okay, the overall negativity. All right. So the the thing is, okay, if I ask you, okay, uh, if I ask you a question, okay, um, have you experienced okay, a conflict okay, with your spouse? Okay, for those of you who are married here, okay, with your spouse in the past four weeks. All right, if this is a if this is a live crowd, okay, I'll, I'll even ask you to stand, okay. And the thing, okay, is because, okay, I want you to I want to tell you that that it is not uncommon. Okay, there are people, okay, and strong marriages actually actually has conflict in their life as well. And of course, okay, um, there's a term for those okay, who say, no, okay, I've got no conflict, okay. We call them saints, okay, or uh, either that, okay, liar, lah, okay. So the thing is, like, aren't we amazed, okay, sometimes, okay, uh, how uh, how couples can be fighting, okay, over the most ridiculous thing. I heard of a story, okay, this couple, all right, they sort of have like an agreement, okay, or like a rule, okay, they say, whoever that, that comes out to the bed, okay, uh, last, will switch off the lights, okay and then okay uh most of the time okay they have no issues no problem okay but on this particular okay uh, a day they, they sort of like both jump onto the bed together and then guess what okay they have a huge argument okay on whose feet actually left the ground first all right and it, and it became so bad okay that the both of them actually went uh, to bed with the lights on all right uh, okay that that is a silly fight okay, okay, to me but sometimes okay the most ridiculous fight can have can actually happen okay uh, um, in uh, when we are having the most romantic moments, all right. That means from one one moment of bliss, okay, when everything is 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 well and it's fine, and then we find ourselves in some form of a like, broiling conflict, all right. So this can happen to anyone. In fact, I want to share a personal case okay, story here, all right. This is a small group, okay. So so let me share something okay, with you. Uh, I actually get uh, I got permission okay from my wife. So so I want to share okay, this 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 couple date that me and my wife uh, had okay about four five years ago. So we actually went to Universal Studio, okay, as a couple. Uh, that particular year, okay, we 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 have like the the annual pass, okay. So usually we'll bring our children, okay, during pu uh, public holidays. But uh, but that particular day, okay, we we actually, yeah, we actually uh, went on a, on a couple trip. So 
So the thing, okay, if you didn't do a lot, okay, but it is really one of the most romantic time, okay. We're just looking at details. I think it's sitting in the cafe. We didn't go for the rides, okay. We just go one, two show. And then after that, we went for a nice dinner in a nice restaurant. All right. So when the food came, okay, I was taking picture of the food. All right. So my wife said, okay, can we start eating? Okay, I'm really hungry. So I said, sure, sure. Okay, let's let's eat. Okay. But but as I said, I I continue to take photo. Okay, and then I delete. I take photo again because I am not happy. Okay, with the thing. Then after that, okay, I point my camera at her. I say, Diane, smile. All right. And then that moment, okay, her tone actually changed. And then uh, she asked, okay, why must you take so many photos? All right. So I was a bit. Uh, uh, taken aback, okay, then I actually said, okay, because remember, okay, we had such a romantic time earlier, right? And I said that, oh, okay, uh, this is my first one taking of you and the food, all right? And then, okay, uh, she actually uh, uh, continued okay, uh, in, in a slightly harsher tone, okay, and then she said, okay, I told you before, okay, I don't like you taking photo of me alone. All right, so I was I was a bit stunned okay, by then, okay, because uh, we got married in the time okay where selfie and Wi-Fi is not in trend yet. All right, so all along okay, it's always me pointing my DSLR at her, okay, taking pictures of her alone from my honeymoon okay to various trips okay till now. So now she said that she don't like me taking photo of her alone. Okay, I was a bit confused, and then okay, uh, guess what? Okay, we had such a robust discussion okay after that. Of course, the atmosphere okay has changed okay. And the thing is, like, we were actually in some form of an argument, all right? And of course, okay, I'm really thankful, okay, that we actually managed to make repairs in the end, and then we finished the food, and we actually went back home together. Uh, I don't know, okay, if it was like 15 years ago, okay, our, yeah, one of us would probably, okay, have left, okay, the, yeah, yeah, the restaurant. So, okay, yeah, but have I, did I tell, okay, that my wife, okay, she's a school teacher, she's a HOD in a, in a secondary school uh, uh, for, for many years, okay, and then um, uh, for me, okay, for the last few years, I've, I've been doing uh, some marriage training and I've, I've done, okay, like a marriage counseling as well. So for me and my wife, okay, we have been like uh, mentoring couples for more than 10 years. All right. I know, okay, after telling you the story, okay, you probably won't believe, but, but that is true, okay, that happened to us and we are really mentoring people. So the thing, okay, is why do we fight, okay? In fact, this kind of situation can happen to any uh, single person, any one of us. But of course, the question is, why do we fight really? All right, there are many reasons, okay, why we fight. But uh, one of the reasons, okay, that I want to share with you, okay, this afternoon, okay, can be reduced to one word, all right? And the word, okay, is actually called perception, all right? It's the way, okay, when we have a conflict, it's the way we, we perceive the situation versus how our spouse perceives the situation. I'm going to show you this picture. It's a picture of a dog, okay? The question I have is, can you see the dog, all right? Uh, some of you, okay, may have seen this picture. So very quickly, okay, you know, okay, you you actually know where the dog is, all right. Some people, some of you, okay, may see the dog for the first time, and of course, some, okay, up to now, okay, you're still trying to find the dog. <laughs> so I think it's real, all right. I'll give you some more time. So can you see the dog? Okay. So if you are with your partner, okay, uh, you can just talk about uh, talk about it. Okay, do you all really see uh, the dog? All right. I'm going to review to you where the dog is, okay, in a moment. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Ta-da! This is the dog. All right, it's all along there. But what's my point? Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My point, okay, is sometimes it is possible that we, okay, or other people, okay, just couldn't uh, see something initially. All right, we call this a different perception. All right. So the thing, okay, if this is in, uh, this is like a real uh, a, a workshop. Uh, I will. I, I would think. Okay, fifty percent of the people. Okay, uh, uh, couldn't see. So if you're one of them, okay, don't feel too bad. Okay, about it. All right. So it is. It is not uncommon. All right. So the thing. Okay, is instead of getting upset. Okay, and getting angry really quickly. Uh, how about we all learn to slow down a little bit and help uh, our spouse see. Okay, from our perspective. Okay. In fact, there is. Uh, in twenty ten, there is a massive study. Okay, on, on relationships on why couples. In committed relationships, actually, a uh, fight. All right, uh, this is done, okay, uh, by Baylor University, okay, in 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 2010 in June, okay, they published this in the journal. All right, uh, and and they identify, okay, couples' underlying concerns, okay, during a fight. And the thing is, like, uh, in the in the journal, they actually share two reasons, or or they call it two real reasons why couple fight. I'm I'm going to share with you today. So the findings, okay, of this of this journal, okay, is. This, uh, the real reasons why we fight is because of two things. Okay, number one, all right, it's called perceived threat. All right, number one is perceived threat. That means okay, I'm feeling that 
that my that my spouse is actually critical, okay, or judgmental, or controlling, or demanding, or attacking me. So perceived threat, okay. Or the second reason is perceived neglect. Like if you feel a spouse okay, is is un uncaring or um, uncommitted or neglectful or selfish or disengaged, okay, you actually have perceived neglect. In fact, um, the example that I that I that I use okay, about our couple date, okay, actually we had I think we have both. All right, I must have experienced like perceived threat. Okay, I'm thinking like I I I felt criticized or attacked. Okay, uh, by the harsh tone. Okay, of my of my wife, and of course. Okay, then for my on the other hand. Okay, my my wife probably had had perceived neglect. Okay, because she said she has she has told me before and I didn't pay attention. And also, okay, then she told me that she's hungry, but I but I'm I'm not really okay neglectful. Okay, by not responding to that, and I still take my photos. Okay, so the so the thing. Okay, is is this is what happened. Okay, in most of the conflict. All right. So the thing, okay, is as I analyze, okay, uh, and I look through, okay, these reasons, I actually came to a conclusion, okay, not not in the not in the studies, but I actually came to a conclusion that I realized that, uh, that whenever in a kind of conflict and we have perceived threat or perceived neglect, we are you are most likely interpreting, okay, the situation through a uh, unmet needs, okay, or unmet need in our life. All right. Every single one of us have 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 needs. Okay, a uh, basic human needs. Again, okay? we also have um, uh, innermost needs. And so, for example, okay, needs for for respect, uh, needs for honor, needs for control, needs for affirmation, or even needs for like sacrificial love, needs for security, and need for commitment. And the thing, okay, is if we are able to see the fight, okay, not like uh, a, a angry spouse trying to hurt us, okay, but really, okay, just like a a, a little child, okay, crying for help. I think we will be, be able to perceive this very differently. If I if I see okay like the fight that I experience okay is just my spouse crying out okay for me to be a little bit more attentive to her or a little bit more caring or maybe for me okay I'm just crying out for the need okay to be shown uh, respect okay, when when my spouse okay, when when my wife wants to bring about like a like an issue okay so the thing okay is this mentality okay will, will really help us. All right, because okay, it's just natural. Okay, if someone wants to attack you, okay, what do you do? You usually block, okay, or you will defend, okay, or you will strike back, or you will run away, okay, either one. All right, but I want to tell, okay, you can you imagine if if a little child comes to you crying, and say, okay, um, uh, uncle, auntie, okay, can you help me? I want to tell, okay, most of the time we will definitely stretch our hands and say, how yeah, sure, okay, how can we, how can I help you? All right, this is the this is the picture that I want to leave okay, with you because sometimes, okay. All we really want is for people to show a little bit more understanding, okay, be a little bit more patient with us, or show us a little bit more care and love. And the question okay, I have for you uh, this afternoon is, is uh, can we extend this to our spouse? I'm going to help you okay, a little bit more okay, here. This picture, okay, I think, I think some of you okay, would have seen this uh, picture as well. All right. So in this picture, the man doesn't know that there is a snake underneath. All right. Uh, bear with me, okay, if you have already seen this, okay, and the, and the woman, okay, doesn't know there's, that there's a, there's a rock, there's a stone crushing, okay, the man, all right, so the woman thinks, okay, uh, I'm falling, all right, and there's a snake here, okay, I can't climb, okay, can't you just use a little bit more strength to pull me up, all right, and for the guy, okay, he's thinking, uh, like, Okay, I'm in such a pain, I'm in such pain right now. Okay, I'm doing my best to pull you up. Okay, can you just help by climbing a little? All right. What is the moral of the story? Okay, the moral of the story okay, is this: sometimes, okay, you can't see the pressure that your spouse is under, and maybe your spouse can't see the pain that you are you are in. Okay, at the moment, I want to tell. Okay, this is life. Okay, and in marriage, okay, we must try. Okay, to understand each other. Okay, show empathy, give benefit of doubt, communicate more, and actually listen better. So we we actually need to learn how to practice the pause. All right, pause before you accuse. Okay, pause before you want to lash out, or pause before you want to react uh, harshly, because uh, this will help you to avoid okay some of the things that you will say or do that you will regret later. All right. So the whole okay, uh, thing okay here is if only we can learn how to be kind okay to one another in a conflict okay can we remind remind ourselves okay let us extend kindness to one another. So so in the concluding part okay of this first key okay about understanding okay why we fight and also how to reduce negativity okay uh, uh, this is it okay the reason that you fight okay is not because your spouse is a terrible person. All right, it is not. It's really about perception. All right, and 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 it is really because okay, your spouse uh, need you at the moment. 
all right? Uh, he or she just is just crying out for you to help, all right? And the thing, okay, is in our in our usual sense, okay, very few of us, okay, will actually go to our spouse to express our needs like that, okay? Can can you imagine, okay, if your if your spouse come to you and say that, hey, darling, okay, you know, you know, I really missed you, okay, you have been very you have been very busy lately. All right, okay, I just really need you to just hold me a little, okay? I'm just feeling a little bit vulnerable, okay? The thing, okay, is a no, okay? Like, we, we usually don't do that, all right? And the, and the thing is, like, uh, usually how it comes out is, is, is out of anger, okay, out of frustration, okay? And we express uh, this kind of anger much more, uh, 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 much more frequently, okay, than we will actually express, okay, uh, that kind of vulnerable, uh, vulnerability, okay, at expressing our emotions. So the thing, okay, if you can understand, okay, like your, your spouse is just, crying out to you, okay, and needing you to do the right thing, okay, although you are both in the very wrong atmosphere, all right, that will really help the situation. So if you can understand this, change the way you think and do the right actions, okay, you will actually grow, okay, and strengthen your marriage, even in the midst of COVID-19 challenges. And really, okay, I want to say that you are your own expert, okay, it's not about me telling you what to do, all right, because you are the own uh, uh, expert of your marriage. When facing a conflict, okay, you need to have this as an underlying, okay, a, 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 a background, okay, but you know exactly, okay, what you will do, all right, that will help to, to, to recover the situation. And you know what you will do, okay, to actually trigger more or push a button, okay, of your spouse. So the thing, okay, is about making a decision now, okay, with the understanding, okay, of perception, uh, now make a resolve in your heart and say, okay, I'm going to start to do more of the things that will help, okay, and do less of the things that will push, okay, the button of our spouse. All right, so that's key number one. It's about fighting, okay, and understanding uh, uh, why we fight and how to reduce the negativity. All right, key number two, okay, is about connecting. All right, uh, in a couple relationship, uh, we are constantly sending out signals okay, for connection. In fact, John Gottman, okay, in one of his studies, uh, he actually uh, uh, said that in, in a regular meal, okay, uh, husband and wife, for example, uh, we actually send out like a hundred signal, all right, trying, okay, hundred signal for connection, all right, so be it just uh, asking a question or just, uh, can I pass the sword, okay, or just looking at our spouse or just smiling and all that. Uh, we are actually, okay, uh, sending out a signal for connection and then, of course, our spouse then can choose to actually respond to that, to that signal or just to ignore it, all right? So basically, okay, the more you connect, all right, the stronger the marriage okay, or the stronger the bonds will be, all right? In this uh, number two key, okay, I'm going to share with you a couple two, a very practical one that you can start to practice, okay, today, all right? The couple two that I, will, uh, that, that, that I want to share with you, okay, is called sharing rehose, all right? This is developed by Dr. Les and Leslie Parrott. All right, Dr. Les Parrott okay, is a clinical psychologist and his wife, uh, Leslie Parrott, uh, is a marriage and family therapist. Okay, so they have many books, okay, and then they also uh, do uh, coaching and then they also do training and teaching. All right, uh, by the way, okay, this is an unpaid okay, advertisement, okay, I'm not paid by them to, to advertise this, but because I use the concept that they have developed, so I just want to acknowledge okay, them. Uh, in fact, Dr. Les Parrott okay, actually said that sharing with hosts okay, is a very practical tool that will help many marriages. All right, it takes about five to 10 minutes and this one can be can become like a weekly habit habit okay, that we can carve into our marriage. So definitely this is something that we can actually do okay, in this COVID-19 situation. All right, in fact, uh, Dr. Les uh, Parrott actually reported that people who practice sharing with hosts, all right, they will see the tension in their relationship okay, drop significantly and also they will see the level of intimacy okay, increase significantly. All right. He also said that this exercise will deliver that promise okay, for the vast majority of married couples. So sounds good, okay? And so what is exactly is sharing with holes? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you through this, okay? So sharing with hold, okay. A rehold is something that you are holding inside of you and then you have yet to speak about or that you have yet to, to, to like speak to your to a spouse about. All right. So sharing rehose okay, is like an exercise okay, where we get to share two positive rehose and one negative rehose okay, in this uh, setting, all right? And so, okay, uh, an example of a positive rehose, okay, uh, let me think okay, of, uh, for example, okay, if let's say I, I, I woke up in the morning, okay, and then when I turn, I can look at my wife, and, and a thought came to me and said that, wow, okay, what a wonderful wife that I have, okay, I just want to thank her for all the things that she has done, okay, and she's really an amazing wife, but of course, okay, it doesn't make sense for me to wake up at a point of time, right, to tell her that, so I think, okay, maybe I'll let her know later, but of course, okay, you know, okay, when we 
wake up and all that. So it slipped my mind. Okay, I didn't I didn't get to to share with her. So it's like a rehold, but a positive one. All right. Another example. Okay, let's say if my wife comes back from work and then she actually sees okay, me uh, actually uh, 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 um, coaching my son HBL and, and talking to him and sharing okay with him, and then okay my wife actually is very appreciative of that. Okay, she actually wanted to thank me and to show appreciation, but then of course okay, she didn't want to interrupt us, so she said okay uh, she will let me know later. But then of course okay we all live at the pace of life. Uh, it is so hectic, so sometimes we forget. All right, then it is like a good rehold in her, but a positive one. Okay, so these are positive reholds. So what is negative rehold? It's just the opposite. Um, for example, okay, let's say after dinner, okay, I was cleaning up the dining table, for example, and then um, and so, as, I'm, as I'm cleaning, okay, let's say my wife walks over and say that, hey, you missed that spot, and then so I say, okay, so I was cleaning, okay, and then she said something like, uh, for example, she said something like, uh, yeah, I want to clean clean properly, lay. <laughs> I don't know, okay, or something like that. And the thing is, like. Uh, of course, I don't want to react there okay, in front of the kids and all that. Okay, and then but I was when I think through, I feel that hey, that is something that is really not so nice. Okay, I'm trying to be uh, helpful. Okay, here, but then you just uh, demotivated me. All right, so it is like a rehaul. Okay, because I have haven't uh, uh, shared share with her, but it's a negative rehaul. All right, Doctor Les Perry said this incident okay, uh, should happen in the last 48 hours. But actually, personally, okay, I, I actually thought it is fine to set it as within a week. All right. So anything okay that's that's within a week, you can actually share okay with your spouse in a in a fixed setting. All right. But of course, okay, it uh it, it shouldn't be like you know 15 years ago. <laughs> all right, when that happened, okay. So sharing hosts should be something that's really recent. All right. So let's move on. Okay, the methodology of this sharing with hosts. Okay. So basically, it's very it's very straightforward. It's very simple. You actually start okay with uh, sharing the positive with uh, Then you follow okay by the negative with and then you share okay, your second positive rehold okay, consecutively. So one, two, three. Then you switch over and then your spouse okay, share the three reholds. Okay? So for, for positive reholds, okay, it's usually okay, it starts with like, like uh, I appreciate it okay, when that happened. Okay? Or I love it okay, when you did that. Okay? Uh, when you say that, I'm, 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 I want to thank you okay, for this and for that. So this is how okay, you share a positive rehold. And then okay, but for a negative rehold, okay, and generally you will start with okay i didn't like it okay when that happened okay or okay i actually felt this when you did that or when you say that okay etc so the thing okay about sharing okay uh, a rehold is is sharing a negative rehold is sharing a negative feelings that you have inside of you all right without attacking your spouse okay it is it's more like a offload something that bugs you or bothers you okay and and you shouldn't okay that, that means you shouldn't be i'm going to share a negative with whole okay uh yeah that day you're really an idiot okay when you did that <laughs> so i so i said no man okay no you cannot attack okay the other person okay sharing with host is about voicing out something okay that bothers you and then the one okay receiving uh the rehose okay will always respond in two words just two words okay you just need to say thank you okay without giving a defense all right uh, to give you a better picture, okay, I want to I want to just show you, okay, or, or just give an example. This is the most recent example, okay, uh, uh, a couple of uh, Saturdays back, okay, when I was preparing this. So that is that is uh, me and my wife okay, sharing with her. All right, so I'll just uh, I'll show it to you to give you uh, some uh, idea, okay. So the first okay, positive report, okay. So I told, okay, uh, hi Danica, I just want to I just want to tell you, okay, that you did a great job, okay, uh, last night sharing and teaching, and then she processed and then she said, thank you. All right, that's it. All right, I just share. Okay, I just, I just want to, I just want to affirm her. I just want to thank her for, for doing that. But of course, okay, um, my wife understand the whole context. And but you don't, okay. I'm gonna give you a little bit of background. But the thing is, when you share the whole, you don't have to explain too much because your wife or your spouse or your husband knows exactly what you're talking about. So basically, okay, it was, uh, that was a Saturday, Saturday, okay, late morning. But uh, on Friday, okay, we actually met up with like uh, four or five couples on a Zoom. So we are doing some teaching on marriage. And so my wife uh, was teaching about the, the needs of a man and needs of a woman. Okay, and I thought she did a great job. So I actually wanted to affirm her, okay, but then it sort of like slipped my mind, okay. Then after the meeting, okay, I sort of forgot, okay, about it. So the next morning, okay, I just shared with her as a, as a rehold. But also another thing happened, okay, in, in, in the morning, okay, we we're actually supposed to do something together. All right, then, well, but when I woke up, okay, I actually saw that she's like sound asleep. So, I'm think, so I thought to myself, okay, I think she's really tired. Okay, I just want to let her sleep in. All right, so then, okay, when she finally woke up, I said, hey, um, uh, let's, let's postpone that, uh, let's postpone that thing, okay, because I, I saw that you're really tired. So I just want you to sleep in a little bit more. And then I asked her, okay, am I nice? <laughs> All right, 
bad move. Okay, and then and then she actually said, okay, like uh, it would be nicer if you help the children. Okay, make breakfast. All right. So the thing, okay, is I actually felt okay, like oh, okay, like actually, I just try to be nice to you, but instead of showing appreciation, you actually uh, you actually just uh, just give me a jab kind of thing. All right. So that that is like a negative recall. So the thing is, in the morning, okay, when I share, when I finish sharing my positive recall, so I say something as. Like that, okay. I says, Dan, okay, I actually felt a little bit unappreciated in the morning when I told you that I thought that you were tired, so I decided to let you sleep in, okay, a little bit more. And then, okay, and then you, you just told me that it would be better if it can help the kids prepare uh, breakfast. So, so then, okay, she processed that, she just said, Thank you, all right, done, that's it, all right. So, then move on to the positive, okay. I says, Hey, Dan, I really love it when I saw you talking to Grace in the kitchen just now, okay, just sharing with her some uh, life, okay, uh, lessons and life skill, okay. I just want to thank you for that. She processed it and then she said, Thank you, all right. So, this is it, all right. This is a rough picture of how sharing reholds gold, all right. If there is a need to discuss more, okay, about the negative behold, okay, it should be done okay, in a different setting, all right. Or if there's a, like a res, uh, like a conflict resolution night, okay, it should be shared shared okay in another setting, not in that uh, the time okay in the exercise when you are sharing reholds, all right. So the question okay, how how and when and how often okay do you share reholds? It actually depends okay uh, between the two of you, all right, between you and your spouse. There's no fixed rule, okay. In fact, Dr. Lance Parrot can actually say for them, it is actually very spontaneous, okay. They can just come to uh, each other and say, that, hey, you want to do a rehose? And in five minutes, okay, they are sharing already, all right. But of course, okay, you can actually schedule it as well. Like, like some people, okay, on a daily basis, okay, or like once a week or like twice a week, or you can do both, okay. You have a schedule, okay, rehose, okay, sharing rehose that you prepare. Uh, or you can uh, actually just be spontaneous. I want to tell, okay, it is really okay sometimes, okay, when you say, hey, you want to do rehose, and the other party say, hey, I really don't have any rehose, okay. But of course, as a person think about it, sometimes, okay, they will remember something, all right. But the reminder, okay, for this exercise is really to bless one another, okay. It's really to be kind to one another. It is not a time to criticize or to complain about your spouse, all right. It is really an opportunity, okay, for you to connect more, for, you, for your spouse to express gratitude, and also for your spouse to express anything that's bothering him or her. So, okay, the, 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 the thing, okay, for me, okay, is I, I'm sharing this because I really see the benefits of this exercise, this simple exercise of sharing a uh, rehose, okay? Because to me, okay, I think this is an opportunity for us to praise and to affirm our spouse, okay? Uh, because it is not a natural thing, okay, for Asians, okay, like us. All right. I don't know when is the last time your wife or your husband comes to and said, "Hey, you are so amazing." Okay, and give you all the praises. I don't know. Okay, most of the time we actually think it in our head uh, that we will say something like, "Of course, I think you are great. Of course, I think you are good." Okay, otherwise I wouldn't have married you. Okay, the kind of thing. Or, of course, I appreciate okay, all these things that you have done for the family, etc. But the problem is, it's all in our head. Okay, and we don't verbalize this enough. So this uh this exercise okay uh, gives us the opportunity okay to actually affirm and thank one another, all right. And also okay if there's anything that bothers you okay or if there's anything that bugs you okay it is inside of you. This is also like a platform okay for you to let your spouse know, all right, without the fear of a blow up okay or like a very defensive kind of mode, all right. Because we have we have agreement okay um um for that okay because sometimes uh, um uh, we are unwilling to share negative okay we hold about how we feel with our spouse because we are concerned in that, okay, uh, something bad, okay, or, you, or there'll be a blow up, all right? Like now things are okay, I just, I just want to rock the boat. And the thing, okay, but the problem, okay, with that is, is then, okay, the negativity actually brews, okay, inside of us. So this this platform, okay, actually uh, prevents the negativity, okay, from, from accumulating, okay, like then one, um, one negative feeling over another negative feeling, okay, and then we, we accumulate there. Have you experienced, like, uh, sometimes, okay, um, your reaction, okay, or your response is actually way, okay, uh, um, uh, surpass, okay, like what the situation warrants, okay. And if that happened, okay, most of the time it is about this negatively that is actually accumulating in you, okay, over time. So this sharing with host actually provide like a safe, okay, an environment. Okay, because both of you, in a sense, know that hey, the purpose of this exercise is for us to bless one another. Okay, it is for us to strengthen. Okay, our our marriage, and then also we do not want to accumulate all the negativity. So we just we just said it in a very uh, respectful manner. Okay, how we feel, and then also for us to think about it and then make adjustments. Okay, to it. All right, and it's not to criticize or to tear one another. All right, so this is amazing. So so my recommendation okay is for you to really try it. Okay, I think you can modify this okay according to uh, into something that that suits you and your spouse. 
But my encouragement again okay, for you is to really try it. All right, for a period of time. All right, just try it, okay, and then see how the effect, uh, see how the benefits it will actually uh, 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 um, uh, 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 unfold, all right? So uh, please don't do it for one, two times, and then you email me and say, that, hey, it's not working, all right? So give it some time, okay, practice this. I strongly encourage this. Okay, uh, let's move on, okay, to my key uh, number three, all right? Key number three is actually this thing called focus on having fun. In order for you to have a strong marriage, okay, you need to have Fun, okay, as a married couple, all right, when a marriage turns bad, fun is usually the first thing out of the window, all right? People are at their best when they're having fun, all right? In fact, men open up emotionally, okay, when we're having fun. Children naturally know okay, how to have fun. But for adults, okay, many times we need to remind, we need to be reminded of that, okay? Because a fun is never really, okay, taught as a very, like a virtue, okay, like, or, or like a good value, okay, growing up. Uh, this is how we are all brought up, okay. Uh, uh, when we are very young, okay, with, our, with our kids, okay, we just know how to have fun, okay. Like my like, like my son, okay, he's an expert in having fun, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a PhD, okay, and then he doesn't like to do work, he just want to have fun, fun, fun. But the thing is that over time, okay, let's say when we think about ourselves, okay, when we were younger, okay, we want to have fun as well. But as we grow up, a, a lot of time adults will tell us, hey, don't every day think about having fun, okay. Don't play so much, you're, don't play so much, you're too playful. You really need to learn how to uh, mature, okay? Or like you, you really need to learn how to discipline yourself. You need to learn responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. So over time, okay, we realize that this having fun, okay, is, is really not a good virtue, all right? But hard work, discipline, okay, diligence, all these are good virtues. So again, okay, as married couple, okay, we really, okay, as I said, we really need to have fun times together because husband and wife are at our best, okay, when we're having fun. Not when we are resolving a conflict, okay? We don't get married to actually uh, brush out our skills to resolve conflict, all right? But really, okay, we actually want to have friendship, want to have fun, okay, with one another. So fun, okay, uh, is very important, okay? Uh, of course, fun is not the whole marriage. I think if you think fun is the whole marriage, then uh, uh, you're in big trouble, okay? Something is wrong. But however, okay, I, I really want to say this, okay? Uh, I, I, think, okay I think marriage is never complete or whole, okay, without fun. All right. If marriage is without fun or without sexual intimacy, okay, or without okay, enjoying each other's friendship, then okay, uh, that 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 marriage has just become like a business transaction. All right, it's all about getting our responsibilities and our commitment, okay, fulfilled. All right, and that is not what a marriage is meant to be. So it is really important for you to think about, okay, do we have a fun in our marriage? Uh, when is the last time that you actually laugh together, okay, and enjoy something together? So. So the thing, okay, is when you, if you ask the question, how do I focus, okay, on having fun? It's really about scheduling a time, okay, to discuss what fun is, okay, to each of you, all right? This is an opportunity for you, for us to, to, to talk, okay, uh, to brainstorm, okay, to get to know your spouse better, okay? And there's 43% there's okay, of you, okay, who are married from 10 to 20 years. I, I want to tell, okay, uh, um, uh, uh, really, um, my wife, okay, uh, 15 years ago, okay, she may like something, but now, okay, she has sort of changed or moved on. So it is always important for us to study one another, to learn more about one another, and then we need to talk and decide what activities we would like to do together. All right, there are many, there are many tips okay, on this, okay, uh, like doing a bingo game, okay, or like actually writing on a piece of paper and then uh, writing all the fun things in a jar, and then you're taking out and doing all the activity. But some consideration, okay, of what activities okay, for you to do, okay, is this, right? You must really explore something, okay, that's new, okay? Like, because of course, if that, let's say all along you are always doing that particular thing, like uh, going for a movie or having dinner together, then, okay, you want to think of something that's fresh, all right? Then there should be a variety of activities, okay? But sometimes, okay, it is not easy to find something that both of you, okay, uh, both really like to, to engage in. And so there must be a time, okay, where, where you must be willing to do something that your wife really likes. And of course, you must take turns, okay, so sometimes your wife will do something that you really like. And of course, okay, you can think about the duration and the cost, okay, of the, of the fun times as well. All right, so duration it can be just like a two minute, okay, like a thumb wall, okay, just for fun, okay, or it can be like a one hour um, a cafe, okay, or just coffee in a cafe, okay, or meal, okay, or half day thing, or, or, or it can be a two weeks vacation. And how much, how much it costs, like how much you need to budget, okay, or it's a free activity like walking in the park and all that. So you need to uh, discuss with your spouse and then come to agreement to, to, to carry out some of these uh, fun activities together. The only rule that I have, okay, for this, okay, is 
during your fun uh, times, okay, you must not bring up issues for discussion, okay? Okay, if there's uh, like an issue with money, okay, or with children, okay, or with uh, parenting styles and all that, that is not the time for you to discuss this issue, all right? There can be another issue resolution, okay, night where you can actually talk about that. But, uh, but really, okay, this is a time that you will set aside, okay, for you to just enjoy each other. So the exhortation is to keep trying, okay, don't give up and practice, practice, practice. Yeah, okay, okay, we need to practice, okay, having fun. All right, yes, okay, we need to keep doing. And so in my last few flights, uh, slides, okay, I, I just want to share this with you, okay. Uh, there, are, there are actually many, okay, like uh, uh, ideas, okay. So of course the best is when you, when you talk together, okay, and then when you come up with some ideas of what both of you would like to do. All right, but of course, okay, let's say you run off idea, okay, there are lots of ideas if you just Google them, right? I just want to read out here very quickly, okay, like, like getting a couple massage, write uh, each other a love letter, have a picnic, cook dinner together, uh, take a trip somewhere new, volunteer together in some community work, go hiking together, etc. So there are a lot, okay, the whole list there, okay, in the internet. But, okay, my personal suggestion, okay, that I want to, I want to leave with you today, okay, is this, okay, I think it is very powerful, okay? If you can do the things that you both enjoy, okay, during your courtship days, if you can remember, okay, some of the things that you do, okay, because when I do counseling, okay, I realize sometimes when a couple is, is in some form of a trouble in their, in their marriage, when, when I ask them to start to think about what they really enjoy okay, in their courtship days, and then when they begin to, to start doing the first work, Okay, so even without feeling, okay, or emotions, okay, they, they start to do the things, okay, uh, we realize over time, okay, uh, they will just begin to fall in love again. It's really amazing, okay. Is this something about this, this re remembering, okay, the things that we used to enjoy, that we used to like to do together, okay. So this is something that I want you to, to talk about, okay, with your spouse, all right, my personal suggestion. And also, okay, of course, we always hear that when we talk about couple of fun times, okay, uh, it, it must really be just the two of you, okay, uh, you must not bring children. I think there is truth, okay, in that. But, okay, I must say, okay, like during this circuit breaker, okay, I discovered some some really fun ideas, okay, doing as a family. So I'm going to share them okay, with you. I think the, the first one, okay, is looking through family photos and videos together, okay. I didn't know that it is so fun, okay, until lately, all right, okay, we have a lot of photos and videos uh, in our different trips, okay, uh, even sometimes just going out for a meal, and then when we look through, okay, the videos, I thought the kids are so, uh, I mean, we, we had a fun time, yeah, the kids are with us, okay, we are not alone as a couple, but yeah, okay, I, I felt, okay, the, the love that we have for each other, okay, just really grow, okay, because of the activity, all right, so the thing is, this is just uh, uh, some additional thought, okay, for you. Next thing, okay, is this, about doing up a photo book for the family. This is something that we also discovered during Circuit Breaker. All right, um, uh, in fact, okay, like we are in our fourth uh, photo book now. Okay, I, I actually, actually prepared this for you, okay. If you can see this, okay, these are examples of the photo book, all right? And so all the photos, okay, uh, this is just two of the books, okay. We are in our fourth book now, okay. We actually fell in love with this, like a, this is like a couple activity that we really like. Um, because okay, many times in our trip, after one trip, okay, we are thrust back into our busy schedule, okay. And the thing is that we don't even review the photos a lot of time. But uh, uh, during the during the circuit breaker at night, okay, we actually plow through some of the photos together. And then we decided to do this uh, digital uh, thing, okay. And then so we plan together, we choose photos, we talk about the trip, okay. And then we bring back some great memories. And the thing is that after that, when, when it got printed out, okay, I think this is amazing, okay, because when you flip through, okay, with the kids, it is such an amazing time, okay, amazing bonding time. So I just want to leave that, okay, with you. Of course, okay, if you have other ideas, you can just uh, send it in, okay, if you can compile that, okay, then, yeah, then it will, it will, it will be amazing if you can uh, share with other people later as well. So um, in summary, okay, I'm coming to an end, okay, in summary, okay, today's to this um, uh, sharing, okay, to this webinar, okay, what have we learned, okay, to strengthen our marriage? And number one, okay, uh, marriage is designed to bless you, all right? The union of one man and one woman, okay, uh, adds many, many benefits, okay, not only to you and your spouse, okay, but also to your children and people around you, all right? It's designed, okay, to bless you. You must believe in that. And marriage, okay, requires work, all right? You need to invest time and effort in it. You cannot just sit there and do nothing and then expect your marriage to become strong, all right? Next, okay, uh, transform, okay, your fights and your conflicts, okay, into tools that will build up the marriage, all right? Conflicts are not the problem, okay? It's always how we handle uh, them that matters, okay? So number four, okay, is this tool that I share, okay, sharing with hosts with one another, 
all right, start the habit, okay, of praising and affirming one another, and then also releasing, okay, any negative feeling, okay, when you have, okay, uh, 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 quickly, all right, so don't accumulate, okay, the negative feelings, and last but not least, okay, focus, focus, okay, on having some fun, okay, in your marriage, because you are really at your best when you're having fun, all right, with this, okay, I just, I've come to my final slides, final slide, okay, this final thought, okay, in your marriage, if I ask you, okay, are you a farmer, okay, or a consumer? All right, are you a farmer or a consumer, okay? What am I saying, okay? I'm saying, okay, you know, if for a farmer, okay, let's say a farmer look at a crop and the crop is not growing well, or a farmer will tend to think, okay, is there something that I can do to actually help the crop? Okay, maybe I add fertilizers, I add more water, I show more care, etc. Okay, a farmer takes responsibility and, and, and does something about it. So, same thing in a marriage, okay, if you have a farmer's mentality, okay, when let's say your marriage is not in a place where you desire, all right, you will ask yourself, okay, and you will take a responsibility, is this, is this something I need to do? Is this something that I can just show more concern, show more care, do something about it to strengthen uh, our marriage? And of course, okay, if you have a consumer mentality, then you are just like, I'm a paying customer, all right? I buy this pot of plants from NTUC or something, okay? And then the plants die, okay? The plants doesn't grow well, okay? I want my money back, okay? I want to, I want to refund, okay? Oh, I get a 40 goods, okay? I'm going to bring back and scold them, okay? I want to change another one. I want to change a model, all right? If you have such a mentality in your marriage, okay? Then it will, uh, you will be terrible, okay? Because you're constantly thinking, okay, did I get a bad deal? All right, what's the problem, okay, with these goods? I get a 40 goods. I want to change another model. I want to get another person. I'm looking for the perfect one. I want to tell, okay, that this thought is very, very important, okay, because uh, in the, my final exhortation, I really want to encourage you for you to think through and say, that, hey, uh, let, let us all have this farmer's mentality. Take responsibility, okay, in this lifelong relationship and do something about it so that our marriage can really be strengthened. All right, okay, with this, okay, I'm done, okay, and so okay. I just need to flash, okay, uh, this this thing for you, okay. But but if you are if you are here, uh, uh, listening, okay, to me today, okay, and you if you are facing some challenges, okay, um, and you need to talk to someone, okay, maybe in the first line, okay, you can call the national care hotline, all right, and then let them refer you, okay, to some help, okay. Of course, okay, if let's say uh, other more targeted helplines are, are mental health, okay, violence or abuse, okay, this is also another slide that you can take a picture of. All right, so uh, you, you, you should just call for help or if you know someone that needs help, okay, then this will be a helpful information okay, for them. All right, so, okay, um, thank you very much, okay. I, I hope uh, you have, I hope you have enjoyed okay, the, the webinar, okay. In fact, we'll be sending you uh, the feedback form, okay. Please let us know, okay, if you, if you enjoyed, okay, the webinar, okay, the things that you like, the things that you don't like or any suggestions, okay, for us to improve. Um, we want to thank you in advance, okay, for the feedback. All right, so uh, follow okay, Families for Life Facebook okay, for more uh, Family 365 webinars and share okay, the care with your friends and other loved ones too. So um, stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy, everyone. So thank you very much. Okay, I, yep, and I'll see you soon.